Hello, my name is Jennifer Bland, and today I'd like to present a new episode in my series on acing the whiteboard exercise. The whiteboard exercise is an event that you will go through as part of your interview for any type of software development position. It is an attempt for a potential employer to use to determine your skill sets and your abilities and whether or not those skills and those abilities match their requirements that they have for their open positions. So today this episode covers HTML and CSS. Previously I have gone through and just did the exercises directly on the board. Instead I'm going to convert over to my computer and I'm actually going to walk through a series of questions that you might have as part of a whiteboard exercise on HTML and CSS. Here are a series of potential questions that you might be asked as part of your whiteboarding exercise on HTML and CSS. Let's go through each of the questions. The first question is to write a CSS selector to select only the inner two list items in the markup below. We have list items for 1, 2, 3A, 3B, and 4. And what they're asking is for us to get a CSS selector that would only access 3A and 3B. There are multiple ways that you can go about doing this. So let's go through different ways that you can access just 3A and 3B. The first one is to start from the class that we have at the top. Then we go down to the unordered list and then to the list item itself. And that would give us 3A and 3B. We can skip the class and just go from the unordered list to the list item to the unordered list and then to the list item itself. And that would give us access to it also. And then another way of getting access to it would be to go to the list item, unordered list, and then list item. And that tells us to go directly to the children of the unordered list. And that would give us three different ways that we can get access to the inner two list items 3A and 3B. <clears throat> it's possible that you will be asked a follow-up question on that and that question in number two is to write a CSS selector to select only the first list item of the two list items in the markup above. So what we want to do is to get access to just 3A and not 3B that we were doing previously. So we can go through and we can start out with going to the unordered list, the list item, the unordered list, the list item, which would have given us both. And what we want to do is select the first child, which would give us 3A. And that's the difference between the first question and the second question. All right. The third question is, what is the difference between an ID and a class? An ID has to be unique. It can be assigned to only one DOM element at a time. A class can be assigned to multiple elements um, on the DOM page. In terms of specificity, an ID will have a higher value than a class because it has to be unique. An element can be assigned both an ID and a class. And an element can also be assigned more than one class. That is, in general terms, the difference between an ID and a class. The next question is, is it possible to change the location of an element on a page via CSS? And the answer is yes. We actually have two methods available to us, and that is position and float. That would give us the ability to look at things on the page. The one thing that you want to do is explain what is the difference between position and float um, if you're going to use them. Both of them take the element out of the page flow. Position requires a parent element to have a position set to relative or absolute in order for it to work. A float requires a parent element to have a clear fix applied, overflow hidden applied, or to be floated itself 
in order for it to work. Question number five. What does the box model refer to in CSS? And the answer is it refers to how elements size, including its borders, margins, and padding, is calculated. Question number six. Is there a way to change the box model? And the answer is yes, because the default for the box model is content box. What content box does is it adds the borders, margins, and padding to the set width and height of the element to determine its size. If you use box sizing border box, then for an element, its size will take the size, the height and width that it's been assigned, and the borders, margins, and paddings will be subtracted from that so that the element will fit directly into the height and width that's been specified for that particular item. Number, number seven, what is the difference between these three selectors? And we have three different CSS selectors. The first one, div, refers to an element that has um, the name of div, and it's assigning um, its background color to be red. The second one is dot div. This refers to an element that's been assigned a class called div, and it sets its background to blue. The last one, pound sign div, refers to an ID and it's um, setting the background on that element to green. Number eight, given this CSS, what would this HTML look like when it's rendered? And the CSS that we're given is div span has a color of red and div greater than span has a background of green. And what they're asking is, do you understand what this background greater than span does compared to just doing div span? The first one, div span, what it does is it refers to any span within a div. So here we have a span, all work and no play, that's contained within a div. So this div span would be color red. So this text, all work and no play, would have red text. Also, we have down here a span that's directly inside a div, makes Jack a dull boy, and that would make its color red. So this first, um, element, um, this first CSS would make all of the text in this HTML to be color red. Now, we have another CSS that is div greater than span, and we set its background to green. And what this does is refer to a span that is a direct child of a div. In here, we have a div, a paragraph, and a span. The span isn't a direct child of the div. It's a direct child of the paragraph. So this would not apply. The bottom one, the span is a direct child of the div. So this background green would apply, and so makes Jack a dull boy would be red text, and it would have a green background. Okay, that is all that I had on potential questions that you might have as part of your whiteboard exercise in covering HTML and CSS. As I mentioned before, my name is Jennifer Bland. My website is jenniferbland.com. Feel free to visit it and get more information. Thank you very much for watching.